So you're probably interested how we get the pulse width modulation going on oscillator 2. And let me show you a number of ways we can do that. First of all, we can direct the output of the, we'll just choose the AR uh, envelope generator. We'll put that straight into the pulse width modulation input. So we've got a straight square wave here. And then let's hear what this envelope does to it. We're pushing it all the way to 100% pulse width, which doesn't make a sound, so we'll bring that down a little bit. As I mentioned before, it's kind of sad because you're, here's your sine wave output and you're like, okay, I wish I could put a low frequency sine wave into this pulse width modulation to get that really cool pulse width modulation sweep that goes on regardless of keystrokes, unlike the envelope. Well, there are a couple of ways you can do this. One of them is with the envelope. And what we have over here on this envelope, which we'll talk about probably in the envelope section as well, there's a switch that has sample and hold gate. And basically, it me it's using the sample and hold oscillator um, to square wave oscillator to trigger the AR envelope. this envelope as well, which sucks. So then we have to invent another envelope to control the VCA. Do a way to do that is to take the gate out uh, from the keyboard, get lag time to make it into an envelope basic shape, and put that into the VCA. So now, every time I hit a key, it's sending a gate signal into the voltage processor, lag uh, processor, which makes the square wave have a slope at the beginning and a slope at the end, giving it sort of an envelope shape. And that's going into one of the inputs on the VCA. So basically, it's a simple envelope that you're using so that the fact that the sample and hold is triggering the envelopes over and over again, which Sadly, you can't separate this uh, ADSR from that input, unfortunately. Um, so, you basically lose both envelope generators, which is not something you really want to do. But uh, then you just run the output. It, is, it makes the um, envelope cycle over and over and over again, which makes it into an LFO, and you can put that right into your pulse width modulation. <laughs> simply than that. All that nightmare. You simply take the internal clock out of the sample and hold, you put that into the lag processor, and take the output from that and put it into the pulse width modulation input. Sadly, it is not perfect, but it does free up your envelopes so that you can be in control of them again, and you do get a cycling of the pulse width modulation. So 
So that is a great way to do it. The way I do it is I bought a Moog CP251 and I used the low frequency oscillator uh, triangle wave to do it. So that's kind of cheating, but I mean, if that's what you want, you can also theoretically, here, let's try this. You can switch, let's say, oscillator three into, um, into low frequency oscillation, take its sawtooth wave, put it into the, la the lag processor and put that into pulse width modulation. Let's hear how that sounds. Try the square wave. So um, these are ways you can get the cycling pulse width modulation. It's still not as good as a sine wave, but it'll work um, in a pinch. And there are easy ways to do it, unless you want to get an external low frequency oscillator like I did. Um, but that's the way to do it.